Naira devaluation pushes up vehicle duties by 40%. That's one of the things we'll be looking at on the show today. And also, how e Naira fits into the cryptocurrency the revolution. That's a second topic we will have on the show this morning. And of course, we will be looking at the headlines from off the press. Let's hear what the national dailies are carrying as the major stories. Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Today, it's a wonderful day. Today is the best day of your life. Yesterday is gone. Uh, today is the day you have. Tomorrow is uncertain. Only God knows what is going to happen tomorrow. But the today that we have, we have to make the best use of today. And wherever you are, if you're watching us right now, that means you are uh, on top of your game, <laughs> saying you are happy. A lot of people, uh, when I asked the question a few days ago, guys, it's been six months already. It's gone already, and we're entering the seventh month. What have we achieved? A lot of people said they have achieved living. So if you are living, that's an achievement on its own. Uh, but the year still has another six months to go, so maybe something will come up. But first of all, try to survive, try to live, try to make everything work for you and make yourself happy because that is definitely a choice. So as we get into uh, the show this morning, we'd like to look at some of the uh, things that are trending on social media as well but don't forget that it's still lagos that we're living in if you're if you're in lagos if you need to have left your house by now because no matter what it is uh, nobody knows what can happen the next moment uh, I, get, I got up this morning and it was really choked on the road very unusual at this time of the day it was choked i don't know what the problem is but i do hope that where you are living and where you need to go to it won't be that choked but you know what this time, it rains almost every day. And if it rains in Lagos, we also know what happens. And from other parts of Nigeria, whatever be the case, uh, be, sh be conscious of what you do and how uh, you use the road that other people are using as well. Because like our drivers will say, I have a road. So it's not your papa road. Uh, when you use it, know that others are using it as well. And like they tell us, when you're driving, be sure that you're also driving other people's cars. I'm not saying you should jump from one car to the other, but you know that when you're driving, uh, just imagine that you were the one driving the other car. Be always conscious, that is what it means, as it were. So we go to the trending topics on the social media. Court orders remand of skit maker, uh, aka Trinity Guy, in prison. You know, there was this story about uh, a skit maker called Trinity Guy, and his full name is uh, not Trinity Guy, he is a... Uh, uh, Abdullahi Maruf Adisa, just popularly known as Trinity Guy. He, is, he has been remanded in prison for allegedly sexualizing a minor in a viral skit video. I haven't watched that video, but um, uh, I have watched some of his videos, and they're really cruel, some of them. Uh, you know, maybe you see him in one of the videos fetching water, asking you to come help him, and then he pours the water on you. You know, it's, it's something that, uh, it's, it's a prank and all that. He doesn't think whether you're going to a, an interview that morning or you're going to somewhere that you need to be on time. It doesn't, doesn't matter. I don't know how it ends behind the scene, but at least in the pranks that I've been seeing somewhere else, they always tell you the camera is watching and all that and all that. And if it is an apology that they need to give, they give you this apology. If they need to pay you, they pay you and all that. But this one just does what he does. But that's another thing because um, some of these pranks, so-called pranks, I don't know why fireworks will be banned and uh, pranks not banned. Fireworks were banned in my understanding because uh, at the time that they happen, you, the police may not even know when it is fireworks or when it is a robbery happening, happening because of insecurity. They said that fireworks should not happen and so many other reasons that they might give, but that was one of them. Now, I saw a video uh, not too long ago, I'm sure maybe you saw it as well, where people actually were doing rituals. They brought a, a lady, dropped the lady, danced around the lady, and people were filming and laughing, thinking that it was a prank or some kind of skit that was being shot. 
after that, the people entered their cars and zoomed off, leaving the victim there. So people who could have arrested them or caught them in the act were thinking it was a skit. So where do we draw the line? I also watched another one where somebody, a girl, was taken as a hookup uh, that they call nowadays, and then went into a room, tied the girl, and the girl started shouting. Somebody came out like it's a, it's, he's a ritualist and all that. The girl started shouting. Uh, one of the girls that they brought for that skit broke the head of one of the skit makers and all that. Nobody knew what could have happened in that. What if the person has a heart attack? What if the person has a very fragile heart and you're doing these things, so-called pranks and all that? <clears throat> I think it's high time these pranks and skits be regulated. Everything should be regulated. I'm not saying people shouldn't do pranks, should, people shouldn't do skits and all that, but the skit, there's nothing wrong with scripting a skit and knowing uh, where the dangers might be and where it might be safe to do it. But that's one funny thing we've seen with our comedians and skit makers and all that. I'm not sure a lot of them script it. it there's nothing wrong scripting something. Even stand-up comedians elsewhere script whatever they do. You watch America Got Talent, British Got Talent, when they go there, they ask them, you wrote it yourself? They say, yes, they wrote it. It's still their brain. So script it. Remove all the dangers from it. So now, right now, the court has ordered the remand of skit maker Trinity Guy. So he is in prison right now. The police arraigned the comedian in a court on Monday, and uh, the police had received several complaints against him, and many groups, NGOs and CLOs, are interested in the case. But he is just a fall guy. I'm not sure he's the only one who deserves to be where he is right now. But I'm sure maybe he didn't know the gravity of what he was doing throughout. And maybe the other people who are not in his shoes right now do not know the gravity of what they're doing. So there should be some kind of schooling of these people, telling them what to do and what not to do. In broadcasting, for instance, we have NTBB, not to be broadcast. You know the things that shouldn't go on air and what things can go on air. And even if they shouldn't go on air and you must say them, you know how to say them. These people should be put through things like that. That's my thinking. And a lot of Nigerians have complained about these big skit makers. Some of them are funny, yes. But let there be safe for the people who are watching. You just go with a bag, you drop somewhere, and you begin to run. And an old woman with a broken leg or a, a weak leg runs after you because she's afraid. What if she falls and dies? Who will be held responsible? I'm just thinking aloud. If you are in the same line with me, maybe we'll start a petition uh, signing saying that the skit makers should either be regulated or stopped. Prank stars, rather. Let's differentiate that. Prank stars, mostly, are the ones that do these kind of things. So please, uh, today it is the Trinity guy that is in police custody. Tomorrow, we do not know who will be in the grave or in the police custody as well. So let us be guided. That's, uh, uh, the state police command last Thursday in a tweet said it had invited Trinity for questioning in connection with a disturbing viral video. Uh, but, well, we, we wish him luck and we wish everybody else uh, sits up and does the right thing. There's another thing that also happened, and that was also very, very um, disturbing. A gas explosion that left four people injured in Lagos. The incident occurred on Monday at the Ijaya area of Agege, Lagos, uh, southwest Nigeria. Three females and a male with varying degrees of injuries uh, were, were affected. The explosion started inside a shop where a gas cylinder or gas cylinders were stored. No life was lost, but the four victims sustained second-degree burns and have been taken to the Lagos University Teaching Hospital. Now, if they are the breadwinners of their families, who will be taking care of their families as they stay in the hospital because of an, an explosion? Now, I do not know who to blame, where to point fingers at. Sometimes, uh, like it is usual, your gas always finishes, like on a Sunday where the filling stations maybe around your area are not working. And then people who are doing it as black marketers are the ones that will help you out. We have these people all around in residential areas. Um, they say filling stations and gas stations should not be where people live. Well, unfortunately, we find them all around places that we live. And if the filling station, as it were, uh, the area is not there, people who retail these things 
are there as well. How the fire started, we do not know. But if there are so many cylinders in that shop and the fire started there, then maybe it could even have been worse. But we thank God for small messes and um, four people injured, three females and one male. Maybe they went to buy uh, the gas or maybe they were just passing by and all that. But there's something that needs to be done. Um, sometimes you cannot also blame the filling stations if they close early. Because like somebody joked the other day, uh, a police station closed very early because they were afraid of insecurity and everybody was laughing. But it happens, that's the reality in Nigeria now. So if you are expecting uh, to have filling stations that will run 24 hours like they run in some other climes, then a lot of things will be done to put, uh, to make that a possibility so that these people who retail in their living houses, in places where people are saturated as it were, will stop doing what they do and then look for other businesses that they can do. But for now, it's just unfortunate that these people were the victims on uh, this particular occasion. We do hope that they will recover fast and that it will not affect their families so adversely that uh, they may not be able to come back up after their treatment. Well, um, there's so many other things that uh, have happened. On the news, we also have the fact that the president, Tinubu, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has renamed a lot of airports uh, after great men and women of Nigeria, great people of Nigeria uh, of years past. Uh, some, some of them, uh, you know, we have a, an airport in Medugri for pre former President Muhammad Buhari. We have um, an airport in Port Harcourt for uh, the former premier, the former, yeah, uh, Chief Obafemi Awolowo. We have an airport anywhere, everywhere in this state, there, there are airports uh, that are named after great men uh, that have gone before us. Chuba or Kadibo has an airport in a Bonyi state and all that. My personal misgivings about all these things is that if you want to honor somebody, I would feel that you should do something new and honor the person with, except the thing doesn't have a name already. Because we know that, okay, yeah, Ebony State just built there, so people haven't begun to call it any other name, just Ebony State Airport and all that, is that's not been known. But do you find out any, have you found out how hard it is to rename a street, to rename one street after somebody and people change and begin to call that street by that name? What stops federal government from doing lofty projects after now and naming them after the people who are, uh, who are dead, who contributed so much to our development. Akure Airport is named after Olumuyiwa Bernard Aliu. Benin Airport is Oba Akenzua. Uh, Dutse Airport is Muhammad Nuhu Sanusi. Ebony Airport is Chuba Wilberforce Okadibo. Gombe Airport is Brigadier Zachary Meimalari. And uh, we also have uh, another airport in Kaduna State. In Kaduna, it is uh, Hassan Usman in Katsina. Makordi Airport, Joseph Zawan Taka. Mina Airport, Malamabubaka Imam. Osubi Airport is Alfred Dietespiv. Yola Airport, Lafido Aliyu Mustafa. There's also a, an airport for the um, Usman Dan Fodio. Usman Dan Fodio also has an airport up north. But, well, these people have been recognized. Let's just hope that everybody else who is looking at this, who is uh, watching this, who is listening to this, who is reading this, knows that one day, maybe it will take a long time, but one day people will remember you for the good works that you have put into the development of our country. So ask yourself, if you pass today, what legacy are you leaving? I'm not saying go and build a flyover, but what legacy are you leaving? When I listen or read about Obafemi Awolowo, what strikes me is not how many roads he built, how many hospitals he built, how many whatever he built, but how many people he built uh, by the policy of free education in the west, uh, southwest of Nigeria is what I always remember. How that policy gave the southwest the most learned population in Nigeria, whether we like it or not, is the southwest that has that, the most learned population in Nigeria. Uh, well, politics, maybe we'll give it to the north because they cling to power very, very much. We give the comments to the east because the Igbos are very industrious. So there's a balance.
But the West was built by Awolowo's policies of free education. That's what I remember about him. Every other thing he did is blighted by the fact that he made men grow. So we thank God that we ever had that kind of a man in Nigeria. We do hope that there are others that will come after now. The president, the current president of Nigeria, uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, says he fashions his um, ideologies after MK Abiola that everybody loved. Whether you're a Muslim or you're a Christian, everybody loved Abiola because, like he said himself, he may not be the, great, the richest man in Africa, but he has been described as the greatest giver. And he was more comfortable with that, even though truly he was the richest man. But he was more comfortable to be known as the greatest giver. And if you give, you give your all. And he did that. But unfortunately, 1993, the love of our lives, <laughs> as, as well, I'd like to say, was not given to us as president. Who knows what he could have become as a president? Maybe the worst president on earth? I don't know. But before the election, and even after the election, Nigerians wholeheartedly voted for him. But today he's been recognized, even though he never s sat on the throne, as it were, to be the president of Nigeria. He's being recognized by our country, and a day has been uh, dedicated to his struggle and all that. So June 12 has now become the Democracy Day, even though I think it should be named MKO Abiola Day. Nothing stops us from doing that, because democracy, what really this democracy. Democracy didn't start with him. Democracy was more strengthened by him, yes. So if it is Democracy Day, why is it Democracy Day? Let's just name it after him. But that's me. I'm not a legislator. I'm not on the corridors of power and all that. But if I were the one to make the decisions, that is what I was going to do, or I will do. Anyway, well, we've been talking enough for now. Let's uh, just take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at what the headlines are saying on Of The Press. Stay with us.